Hello again, uh, another Out of School Care Network game tutorial. This time we're looking at the game of Liar's Dice. You may have uh, come across this game before or heard about it. Uh, it was uh, featured in the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. You would have seen Johnny Depp and his mates playing it. Uh, so yeah, it's got a reasonable profile. Some of the kids might know it or be familiar with the idea of it. But I'm going to show you exactly how to play it. If you like what you see here, uh, there are some files you can download, some links on the website to get the, the board, and also a very well set out uh, set of rules that I found online, including a very important section that I've added at the back, which is a very quick reference for how to set up the game quickly and get straight into it once you've played it and studied the rules carefully once. Uh, then it's just a quick reminder of the most important rules and I think that's a really handy thing to have. So let's get straight into it and show you how to play. Okay, here's everything we need for a game of Liar's Dice that has four players. Four cups, each containing five dice plus an extra dice which is used for the bidding and your board here. I uh, just want to quickly mention uh, Dave Lartigue. He's made this uh, board very handy for tracking the game. Pretty indispensable, so thanks Dave. Love the board and uh, hope you don't mind us using it here in this video. If you want uh, to get these materials or you want some dice, please get in touch. Uh, just pop me an email. The link uh, to the Liars Dice Board will be on the website and uh, we've got plenty of dice for sale at Oscan Packs of 10. So you can play this game with quite a few players, uh, two or more. It doesn't really work with two, you really want three or four as a minimum and I have played it with seven or eight players. The more players you add of course the slower it gets in terms of waiting for your turn. At the start of the game Everybody rolls their dice, hand on top of the cup, give them a good shake, and upside down like that. All the cups have been flipped over, the dice are hidden underneath the cups. Only the player who rolled it can see their dice, so they can lift their cup, peek underneath it, put it back down. So you can see your own total, the numbers on the dice, but not what everyone else has rolled. Now let's zoom in and see what happens on the board as we play the game. So you'll see the board has numbered spaces, one, two, three, four, five, and so on with a square. The dice basically goes in these squares. The stars are for wild dice, one, two, three, four, and so on. Ones are wild in the game. Okay? Ones are wild. Wild means that the one can stand for any other dice. So, for instance, if I have rolled two fours and a one, the one can create another four so that I have actually rolled three fours if I choose that. I can also just count the wild as a wild and say I have rolled one wild. Now you don't give away what you've rolled in the game to the other players. What you do do on your turn, and we'll start with green, is make a bid. Okay, It's a bidding game and the object is to stay in the game. If you want to stay in the round you must raise the bid or challenge the previous player. So whatever green bids then yellow has the option to raise that bid or to challenge green's bid and say I don't think you can do that. I don't think you have. I don't think there's that many points or dice here. Okay? We'll explain what that means in a minute. And we basically go around until either till basically someone is challenged and either the challenge is successful or not. And if that happens they lose a dice. The game is played until someone loses all their dice. Or you can play till only one player has dice left, so eliminate players gradually that lose dice. 
it's up to you. It's more fun maybe to stop as soon as someone's lost all their dice and then everyone can start from scratch again. If you're playing with kids, that's probably a nicer way to go. So what happens on the bidding and challenging phase? Okay, so let's have a look at what green rolled. Now this would be kept secret, of course, uh, from the other players, but we'll just bring it over here. So green, green would have their cup, have a little peek. So green's got two fives, a two, a four, and a six. When green bids, they are bidding on how many of that number is in all the dice that have been rolled. Green may have a little think and decide for a first bid that they'll bid a bit low and they will bid two fours. So green has one four and green is bidding that there is at least one other four amongst all the other dice in total. So when someone is challenged all the dice are looked at and you see whether the bid matches the number of dice in total so there is at the moment 20 dice in circulation and of course with more players the bids can go much higher because there are many more dice in circulation so let's say green decides to bid two fours so let's see what green's done green has turned the dice to four and placed it on the spot number two. Okay, it's yellow's turn next. Let's move greens away. Yellow's turn next. What's yellow rolled? Green doesn't know what yellow's rolled. No one else knows what yellow's rolled except yellow. Yellow has a look. Yellow's rolled two threes, a one. In fact, three threes, a one and a five. Counting the wild, that's four threes. Yellow must either challenge green that there is and basically would require then to win the challenge that there be only less than two fours in circulation, so only one four, which is quite unlikely. So yellow is going to opt to raise. What will yellow raise? Well, yellow's got a couple of options. Yellow can either keep the dice on two and raise the bid to a higher number. So for instance, they might raise the bid to five and stay on two. Because see, they're holding one five. That's probably quite a safe bid. There's probably at least another five in circulation. So one way you can raise the bid is to keep it on the same number, but raise the dice to a higher value. So from four to five. Okay, so the bid was at two fours. It could be raised by going to two fives, or it could be raised by going to a higher spot. For instance, three. And yellow might say, well, I've got a good hand of threes. Let's raise the bid to three of threes. So the dice has changed to three, and the bid's raised to three. Yellow doesn't have to just raise it by one spot. Yellow could actually raise it all the way to four, which makes it a little more challenging for the next player to decide, hmm, okay, so I've got to have at least four of a higher value or I've got to put it up to five of something. Now let's look at yellows again. Yellow has three threes and a one. So it's quite a safe bet that... Um, they, won't, they, they can win the challenge. Another option that yellow has, and this is the, basically the other thing that any player can do on their turn, is consider the number of wilds. So yellow's rolled one wild. What they might want to do is say, because remember the bid was at two fours, they can bid onto one of the wild spots, but again, it must be further up the track. So in this case, one wild is gone. They could bid two wilds. Okay, change the dice to one and put it on the two. Because remember, yellow's rolled one wild. There's probably a good chance there's another one. So when it's on the wild spot, only the wilds are counted if there's a challenge. So saying there is two wilds. So that might be what yellow does just for fun.